Thank you for choosing to listen to today's message by Reverend Dr. David Entry. We know you will be blessed as you seek and serve God. We believe that this message will stir up a desire for more of God, even as you listen. Be blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, you can tell, I want to speak about, cast not therefore away your confidence. Hebrews chapter 10, verse verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he, uh, he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draws back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdi- perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of there to the saving of the soul hallelujah we believe god that in times like these this word is necessary because sometimes life can can come with all kinds of challenges and difficulties bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous but the lord delivered him from them all (laughs) many are the afflictions of the righteous i think psalm 30 somewhere there. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, Psalm 34 verse 19, the Lord delivers him from them all. God will certainly see you through this one too, because guess what? This one too shall pass. And when you walk with God, watch this, I'm about to say something quite important. When you walk with God, he will sometimes allow he will, so he will give you enough victories. He will give you enough testimonies to keep you going. And he will also allow, sometimes allow, challenges and difficult times to come to cause you, keep for, to cause you to keep looking up to him. Sometimes we are at, at our best with our work with God when our backs are against the wall. When, you're, when you work with God and your back is against the wall. It's not an indication that you are done, done and out. No, 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 no. Because when you walk with God, the end always is good. You always have a good end. He said, I know in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. They are thoughts of good to bring you to an expected end. So the the end will be will be a good end. He says that for the uh, the the expectation of the right there's an end and the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off or shall not be cut short right so your expectation your hope and your expectation shall not be cut off that is why text talks about the looking at, uh, 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 the, uh, the blessed hope the second or the appear the glorious appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior Jesus, or the Savior Jesus Christ, First Peter chapter one verse eight. So it's our bl- glorious. So we rejoice. In, in fact, Paul said that nevertheless, I count my, not my life dear to me, that I might finish my course with joy. In Acts chapter twenty verse twenty four, that I might finish with joy. Hallelujah! I might finish with joy. He said unto him who is able to present us faultless before him in joy. Uh, Jude 24 and 25. Said, oh, verse 24, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious throne or before him with joy unto him. Joy. We will end in joy, not in shame, in glory. The thing is from glory to glory. I know that momentarily you might be going through a difficult patch, but the good news is this one too shall pass. The good news is, uh, it says that for our light affliction, Kabbalah uh, Shedaya, Second Corinthians chapter four, verse sixteen. For, um, 
for this cause we fail not, fail not. Even though our outward man perishes, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. Look at verse 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment. He said, but what I'm going through is so heavy. He said, it's light in the light of the glories that are going to follow in the light of the reward that is coming. So he says that for our light affliction, which is bad for a moment, works for ah, us. Philippians chapter 1 verse 12. And he says that um, the things that I've gone through has rather worked out for the federance of the gospel. I'm going through something, but it's working out for the federance of the gospel. So you see, the end of the story is that God wins. And when God wins, you win. We win. Hallelujah. So it says that our light afflictions, afflict, this is interesting. Anytime you are going through problems and challenges, if you're working with God, and you are going through, when, if you work with God and you go through difficult times, that's why it says that count it all joy. James chapter 2, chapter 1, verse 2. Count my brethren, my beloved brothers. It's a, it's an, a, a term of endearment. My brothers. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse, different types of trials. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trial of your faith works patience. I will come to that. So he says that for our light afflictions, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. Our life, light affliction. Let sometimes when my, 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 my sister, encourage yourself in the Lord. Know that this, this affliction is light. My brother, encourage yourself in the Lord. Tell your wife, don't worry, honey, this is a light affliction. Tell your husband, don't worry, dear, this is a light affliction. Why? And this light affliction is necessary because it's actually, he's been employed. It's, an, it's working for you. It's your employee. Your afflictions, it's your employee doing what? Working for you. What is it working for you? A far more, far exceeding it breaks limits exceeding eternal weight of glory glory i told you your end will be glory you will not end in shame in jesus name so so because of that therefore cast not away therefore because of this fact that things are working for your good things will not always remain like this can you imagine if joseph in the house of potiphar or in the land of slavery if he had cast away his confidence and he said that as a God, I've waited, I've, I've, I've waited and waited and real, I've kept waiting. Nothing really is happening. So, well, why don't I just go ahead and live my life? Live a simple life. It's actually complex. <laughs> life is, life is a, a very complex thing. And the most complex thing about life is trying to make life simplistic. <laughs> so Joseph did not cast away his confidence and see the, st- the end of the story. Your, your, the end of your story will also be a glorious one. Moment, sometimes when you are going through something, you, you consider the situation, you are wondering, so when shall this end? When shall this end? Keep your eye on the Lord. I'm going to show you how, what to do to not to cast away your confidence. But in the, in the first place, it says that cast not away the, the Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 again. He said, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35, cast, cast not away therefore your confidence. The, the Greek word translated confidence is um, parasia, 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 sorry. Sounds like this, parasia. What is the meaning of parasia? It means that cheerful courage. It means boldness. It means free and fearless confidence. Nothing is restricting it. Nothing is intimidating. Free and fearless confidence. Sometimes when you are putting your confidence in God, it looks like, are you sure? Are you sure? That's why I'm teaching this. You have to be free and fearless. Dare trust. I dare you to dare trust God. Trust God. Psalm 18 verse 30. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried, and he is a buckler to all those that trust in him. Mom, dad, my brother, my sister, I want you to be strong in the Lord. 
Because the Bible says these days are evil. The days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17 says the days, are, sorry verse 16. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. In Ephesians chapter, chapter 6 verse 13 said therefore having done all things to stand, stand therefore uh, uh, put on the whole armor of God that you'll be able to stand in the evil days. Evil days. Evil days. So when evil storm, the evil winds blow, those that are strong in the Lord, those who know their God, in the time evil wind is blowing, we shall be strong and do exploits. Daniel eleven thirty two, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So therefore, because of this, don't cast away your free and fearless confidence. Do not cast away your cheerful courage. It's not morose and sad courage, but cheerful courage. Yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's not like you are putting up a bold face, but this is coming from within. Cheerful courage. You will not cast it off. Don't cast away. Don't cast away, therefore, because of what, what the future holds for you. Don't cast away, therefore, your cheerful courage. Don't cast away your boldness. In Acts chapter 4, verse 13, the Bible says, and when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they saw it. These guys are bold. Bible says, Acts chapter 14, verse, I think, 2 and 3. They were de boldly declaring the word of God. In Acts chapter yeah, 14, verse 3. Boldly declaring the word of God and God confirming his word with signs. They were boldly, long, therefore long abode. They stayed there long and boldly, confidently declaring the love word of the Lord. So we in Philippians chapter 1, verse 6, he said, being Confident in this very thing that he who has begun, don't 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 let us abort the mission. God has begun it. Look at how far you've come. Look, you've done well so far. You've done well so far. Press on. Philippians 3. He said, I press on towards the mark. Press on. You, you don't slide into it, you press into it. Since the days of the uh, of John the Baptist, Matthew chapter eleven verse twelve, the days of the from the days of the J John the Baptist, the kingdom of God suffers violence, and the violent to take it by force, take it by force. You have to grab it aggressively, aggressively make sure that you are holding on to faith and good conscience, which some having abandoned have made shipwreck of their faith. First Timothy chapter, First Timothy chapter one verse nineteen. Hold on therefore to faith and good conscience so you you are you you are fighting the good fight of faith first Timothy 6 12 fighting the good fight of faith or is it 11 fighting the good fight of faith holding on to it he said fight the good fight of faith lay hold of eternal life <laughs> fight the good fight of faith and uh, yeah first first uh, first Timothy 6 and lay hold on eternal life you are fighting to lay hold on to you have to make sure that you hold something firm he said behold i come quickly my reward is with me he said, no he said um revelations 3 11 hold to your crown hold hold first that no man takes away your crown there is something you have to hold on to you've come so far you've done so well so you've been confident in this very thing that he who has begun a good way shall perform it pastor I want you to know that good work God began, he does not stop midway. He doesn't abandon his projects. What God began, if God began it, he'll perform it. If God began it, fear not. Have this fearless confidence in God. It's about time. Believers, let's rise up and have a fearless confidence with God and say with Job, even if even though he slays me, yet I will trust him. <laughs> Usually, those who say, if I perish, I perish, never perish. Hallelujah. <laughs> Esther said, I'll go before the king. This is a kingdom assignment. It's a kingdom project. I'm taking that bold step. And if I perish, I perish. And they don't perish. Those who usually say, if I perish. Is that our God, King, let it be known to you that we will not bow to this, your golden image. And let it be known that our God is able to deliver us from your hands or from the fairy finest. And even if he doesn't deliver, we want you to know that we ain't bowing. We ain't. That's the fearless confidence. Fearless confidence. Boldness. Parousia, the Greek, the Greek word. 
parousia. You must have your parousia. Boldness. So it says that, therefore, cast not. You start in confidence in God. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 3, it said that we have no confidence in the flesh. Our confidence is not hinged on physical, material things. So that if you lose your job, then it's like oh, your whole world is coming down. No, you have Christ. The Bible says we are made complete in him. If you lose your job or you lose money, you lose a house, you, lose, you will not lose it. But I'm telling you that even if those things are not there, he said the Lord is our help, present help in time of trouble. Therefore, even if the whole earth be moved, uh, some... Um, Psalm 46, even if the whole earth be moved, we shall not be afraid. Why? Because the Lord is our confident help in time of trouble. Our parousia, will not, we will not cast our parousia away. Therefore, or cast not away, therefore, your parousia. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Why? <laughs> listen, listen to this. Come on, Ayala, Maya. Cast not, therefore, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has, which has great recompense of reward. Let me read it from the Amplified. It has great recompense of reward. Cast not away, therefore, Amplified. Let's see how the Amplified puts it. Do not, do, do not, therefore, fling away your fearless, which I said, fearless confidence, the parousia, parousia, do not cast away, do not fling away your fearless confidence, for it carries a great and a glorious compensation of reward. Magada Shara. What does compensation mean? Whatever you have suffered in that season, you will be given, a, uh, you'll be paid back what you have lost, what you have suffered. So it's like you are going through a patch as you obey God and walk with God and it looks like nothing is working for you. They are telling you, why don't all this church church thing, why don't you stop and start going to some club? You get somebody to marry you or you get a man and somebody says, oh, but all the, the men, their men are finished in church. Why do you, you are always going to church church? Do not cast away your confidence. Do not cast away your confidence for it has great recompense of reward. This is a joyful expectation. Hallelujah. And he says that for do not cast away therefore or, uh, uh, do not therefore fling away your fear, fearless confidence for it carries a great and a glorious compensation of reward for you have need of steadfastness a uh, sorry steadfast patience and endurance so that you may uh, you may perform and fully accomplish the will of God and thus receive and carry away and enjoy to the full what is promised. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Look at the NIV. <sighs> I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Can you imagine if Jesus had not saved us, how your life would have been by now? Yeah. No hope. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2, I think verse 11, no, verse 12 there. It's that we were in this world without hope, our strangers to the covenants of promise, without God in this world, without hope and without God. We are aliens. But now the story is different. These are the things we should rejoice in. And because of that, our end is always glorious. The songwriter says that our, 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 our strength, thy grace, our rule, thy word, our end, the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Our, 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 our strength, thy grace, our rule, thy word. It's the grace of God that strengthens us. It's the word of God that rules in our hearts and determines what we can do and what we cannot do. And guess what? It is. The, our end is always the glory of God, from glory to glory. He said, as we, we all, with an open veil faces, as in a, a glass, beholding us in the glass, are being transformed into the same image. First, Second Corinthians chapter, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen. Are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. That will be your story in Jesus' name. Amen. So it says, cast not therefore away your confidence, which has a great recompense of reward. In other words, God will compensate you with a reward that that takes care of all the previous losses, and then. Honest you for the days ahead. 
So whatever, the point here is, what, you know, sometimes you work for a com company and you use your fuel to do company, whatever, your car, and the company will tell you the end of the month or end of the year, there is a certain amount that is given to you towards your fuel cost. So you give the receipt to them. So you are spending your own money for the fuel, but you know it will be paid back. You know, when you're a lawyer and you're doing a case, all the hours you are spending on the case for the client, Oh, you are, not, you are not very worried. Why? Because, you know, it's coming with a compensation. Compensate. They'll pay you for your service and pay you for your time. All the time you have spent working on this case, everything, normally, the lawyers will claim it back. So in a, in another way of putting it is, do not cast, therefore, away, do not cast away, therefore, your confidence. Why? Or your parousia. Why? Because you make, you claim it later. <laughs> you claim all the loss. Anything you have lost is there for grabs and for claims back. Because God will not even wait for you to claim it. He himself will compensate you. He will, and if God is compensating you, can you imagine how good it's going to be? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So be strong in the Lord. Well, let's look at quickly um, how to, what are the things to do in other to to not cast away your confidence, all right? So what, are, what, what does the scripture expect us to do so you don't cast away? Because it's nice to say, okay, well, I, don't want, I won't cast away my confidence. I won't cast away my confidence. But what must you do so you don't cast away your confidence? Let's look into the scriptures. It says that, for we, um, but cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Verse 36, for we have need of patience. So number one, you need patience. The word translated, the Greek word translated patience sounds something like this. Uh, hupo, um, um, uh, yeah, hupo money, hupo money. So hupo money is hope. Sorry, sorry, it's patience, I'm sorry. Cast not away your patience, your hupo money. Other times it is also translated perseverance. For we have need of patience, we have need of perseverance, okay? We have need of hupomone, hupomone, we have need of hupomone, we have need of patience, we have need of perseverance, we have need of, uh, the, the Greek word, it means that steadfast endurance. So when we read, I think the Amplified, the Amplified says steadfast endurance. For we have need of steadfast patience and endurance. So it's a steadfast patience, patience that is steadfast. It is constant. It's consistent. This patience is not flaky. It's not fickle. It's not inconstant. It is constant. It is persistent. It's steadfast. Right? It stays constant the way it should be. So he says that let, we, we have need of this type of patience. A patience that is not today out and tomorrow in, in and out, in and out. No, but it's patience that is steadfast. How do you have steadfast patience? By being determined. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 that be ye followers of those who through faith and patience. That you have to be careful who you surround yourself with. It so significantly affects your patience towards the things of God or your confidence in the things of God or how much you are able to wait, patiently wait for the things of God. So he said, be ye not slothful, don't be lazy, right? Patiently, patiently waiting for God is a lot of work, it's hard work. I know you agree with me, and I know if you've been in church, if you've been in God, with God for a while, within Christ for a while, you know that it takes a while. Sometimes things don't just happen because, just because you prayed. No, no, no! Things won't happen because you have prayed. Stop trying to hold God to ransom that, why I've prayed, you haven't done it. Hey. Things don't happen just because you prayed. Things happen in the time of God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes that in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time. So things happen in the time. The Bible says there is time for everything. Uh, there's time for everything. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's time for everything under the sun. It operates with time. Seasons change. All right? But God doesn't change. So you might be in the winter of your life. But good news is that summer is coming. <laughs> Sometimes people feel, I've waited for summer for so long. Oh, no, no, no. It depends on how you define waiting. See, when your 
you are using someone had to wait for 10 minutes all right uh, because waiting for the bus for 10 minutes or sits on the bus right before at the station sits on the train let me even use train sits on the train and waiting for the train to take off usually when the the platform is ready or the trains are open for you to join you go maybe you're going traveling from uh, intercity to travel sometimes you go and you have to wait for the train to take off so there are times you wait for about 10 minutes now your friend is on the phone with you he's in the train on the uh, to scotland waiting for the train to take off and where where are you you are also in the plane to scotland waiting waiting for the plane to take off and then their train takes off now you say why why haven't we taken off no yeah it's too different don't compare he's in a train you are in a plane plane sometimes to take an hour before the, the plane takes off You'll be seated, everybody's boarded or on board, and we are waiting, checking that and checking that. So what I'm trying to say, your system of judgment can influence the way you are waiting, even though it won't change the period. So you should just trust God and be patient. So also work hard. He said, don't be slothful, Hebrews 6, 12 again. Don't be slothful, but be ye follow. It takes hard, hard. It is a lot of work to follow people who have obtained the promise. You have to look at who you are, who is your role model, who is your, 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 who, who is, who, whose life you are drawing encouragement from, so long as your walk with God is constant. Everybody needs someone to draw encouragement from. Jesus is our ultimate, but you need some human beings. Efficient, sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 11, Paul said, follow me or imitate me as I, I imitate Christ. So you must have people. And he says that um, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, I think, whose faith you should consider. Who faith you should follow, considering their end, the people who teach you. So follow their faith, considering their end. Look at how their life went, the direction of their is That tells you it's worth, worth following them. And so, number, uh, um, the, the point here is that it's important to understand that it takes a, a work to, f to follow. And, but if, if you f there are people whom, when you follow, it will help you to be able to wait patiently because they... It, you obtain the promise through faith and patience. Not faith alone, but patience as well. You have faith. Yeah, I believe in God. So why are you not wait, willing to wait? And waiting there does not mean sitting down. But waiting there means that patience there means that holding firm to God's word. You are, you are holding on to God's word that you will not let go after any circumstance. Steadfast holding on to the word of God. Right, so it's ne it's necessary. Um, Hebrews chapter ten, verse um, twenty twenty three says that let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. The New King James says the confession of our hope without wavering. Let's hold fast the confession or the profession of our faith without wavering. Let us hold fast, hold fast without wavering. Hold it fast. Why? Because faithful is he. Our, 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 I've read it already. So faithful is he. Uh, for faithful is he who has promised. So it takes a certain level of confidence in God to uh, obtain the promise. And if you're going to have confidence, then you need patience. In Psalm 40, in the book, Psalm 40, verse 1 to 5. I like that scripture. Let's look at it. In Psalm 40, verse, Psalm 40, verse 1, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and and heard my cry he brought me up also out of an horrible pit you are coming out of any horrible pit you are in as you wait on the Lord out of the mary clay you are coming out of any mary clay a mary clay is something it's like muddy you see when you stand you are sinking and you can't walk properly and you when you take any step you are sinking. you know when sometimes a horse can fall into a mary clay and then you see that the horse is sinking and they need to bring some or uh, when a car falls into a Marie clay. It's not water, but it's water log and it's clay. It's muddy and you are sinking. When you stand, you are sinking. It says that God will bring you out of a Marie clay. Yeah. I don't know what situation your life finds is you find your situation or you find yourself in. Either your marriage or your career or your life. You, I mean, your ministry. He said God will bring you out of the Marie clay in the name of Jesus. He says that for... Um, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he climbed unto, he climbed unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up 
out of, uh, uh, also out of a horrible pit and horrible pit and out of the mary clay and set my feet on a rock and establish my goings hallelujah that will be your testimony i told you the story will end beautifully for you he set my feet on a rock and established my going and he has put a new song in my mouth when god does it he always god is interested in putting song in your mouth one of these song or laughter we always put song in your mouth bible says that Abraham, um, Sarah said, for the Lord has made me to laugh. Genesis chapter 21. Yeah. Genesis chapter 21, verse 3 to 5, somewhere there. He said, for the Lord has made me to laugh. Other translation said, the Lord has prepared for me laughter. Another translation said, the Lord has put laughter in my mouth. I'm talking about you. God will put laughter in your mouth. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Joy comes in the morning, Psalm 30, verse 5 or so. Weeping men, joy in the night, for the night, but joy comes in the morning. So he says that, and he has put a new song in my mouth. When they came out of Egypt, in Exodus chapter 15, Bible said, and Moses and the children of Israel sang the song. They sang. I, was, I see you singing. Get ready. You're about to rejoice and celebrate and sing. Why? Because when you wait on the Lord, he will always bring you out. In Revelation chapter 15, this is Exodus chapter 15 verse 1. Revelation chapter 15 verse 3. Bible said, and they sang the song of Moses and the song of the Lamb. Talking about how marvelous are your works. Wonderful are your works, O Lord. Hallelujah. You are about to sing a new song. And he put a new song in my mouth. And he put a new song in my mouth, even, this, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wondrous, uh, wonderful works which thou hast done, and, that, and thy, thy thoughts which are to us what? They cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee if i would if i would declare i would declare and speak of them they are more than can be numbered just 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 walk with god you will be surrounded with so much testimonies that will be your portion i'm just god sent me this day to just let somebody know that it is well it is well with your soul. The songwriter says that when peace like a river attends my way when uh, uh, attends my soul when uh, see below's roar. When peace like a river attending my way, when sorrows like sea below's roar, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. And I want you to know it is well with your soul. In Psalm 27 verse 4, look at this quickly, verse 14. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen my heart. Wait on the Lord, I said, wait. That's a nice one. Wait on the Lord. Psalm 37 verse 7 verse um, 9 and verse 34. Psalm 37 verse Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 37 verse 7 said, Rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him, him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to, to pass. Someone seemed to not be working with God, doing all kinds of things, and things seem to be working for them. said, so don't be worried because of them. It's your, 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 your league is you're in a different league. Don't be worried about them because of them. Verse 9, it says that for evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait on the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. I see God doing it for you. Verse 34 says that wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Don't worry. Just stay faithful. Consistently wait. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Hupo mene. Hupo mone. Wait on the Lord. Patient, confidently wait. In Psalm, um, Psalm 39 verse 7, it says that, And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. What am I waiting for? It's you I'm looking for. That should be your testimony. Or that should be your song. That should be your approach to life. Lord, I'm waiting on you. In Psalm one. Um, one, two, three, verse two. Let me look at it. Psalm one, two, three, verse two. It says that, "Behold, as the eyes of the servant look unto, um, look unto the land, 
sorry, the hand of his of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait on or upon the Lord our God until that he has mercy. Our eyes are waiting on God. This is the approach of the Christian. I'm looking up to God. I'm happy to hold on to God's word and do it God's way until his glory is manifested in my life. I'm waiting to the end. Jesus says that you shall be hated by all men for my sake. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22, 23. You shall be hated by all men for my sake, but they that endure to the end, the same. He that, die, he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. So Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30 and 31. He said, the young men shall utterly fall, but, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 30 said, even the, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait on, upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. Wait on the Lord, and you will not sink. Wait on the Lord. So he said, um, how do you, how do you, no, what you do not to cast away your confidence because he didn't say God will do it for you. He will not cast. He said, you therefore cast not away your confidence. So cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Number one, why? Because it has great, uh, uh, number one, sorry, for you have need of patience. Number two, obviously, say, I just said it in some, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse, Hebrews chapter 10, verse um, 35 again. It says that, don't cast away your confidence for it has great recompense of reward. So number two, respect the reward. There's a reward coming, all right? There's a reward coming. Cast them away for it has great recompense of reward. There's a reward. Now we talk about reward. It's, it's important to understand that everything you do in Christ shall be rewarded. Every good thing you do in Christ for the Lord shall be rewarded. As you walk with him, as you stand on his word, he will reward your faithfulness and your patience. Now look at this. Um, for, um, yeah, he, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26. Look at this. Hebrews 11, 26. 25 says that, they're talking about Moses, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God rather uh, uh, than enjoy the, to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a, 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 for a season. Look at verse 26. Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Why? For he had respect unto the, re, uh, unto the recompense of the reward. Respect the recompense of the reward. So number, number two is respect the reward. In, in Jesus himself, the Bible says that in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So keep your eyes. Now watch, this is very important. Bear the reward in mind, but keep your eye, not on the reward, but on Jesus. So Hebrews chapter 2, he says that looking unto Jesus, people will disappoint you. But no, no what? You are not looking after people. Sometimes even a pastor might disappoint you. Sometimes some see some someone you thought is a good Christian brother you can count on might disappoint you. He said, "Don't look onto them. It's good to have a role model and take inspirations from people who are ahead of you are doing well. But you look onto Jesus, not even onto the reward. You you focus. You look onto Jesus, looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. What He's our supreme example. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. So there was a joy ahead of him. That's what made him endure the cross. So you can you'll be able to go through whatever you are going through if you keep the reward in mind and look unto Jesus. So respect the reward. Respect the reward because God is faithful. He said that um, I come, behold, I come quickly. Revelation 22 verse 12, my reward is with me to give each one according to his works. Hebrews chapter 10 verse, Hebrews chapter 10, look at verse 34, said, for ye had compensation, oh, sorry, for ye had compassion of me. I think I would like to read that from the NIV. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 34, Four, say, you, you, uh, you suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. Really? Joyfully accepted the confiscated by No problem. You joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. Why? Because you, you knew, you knew that you, you yourselves had better and a lasting possession. 
Because you knew what was coming is better. What you have in Christ is far better than anything earthly, anything temporal. So you knew. You see, let the reward be on your mind because God is a rewarder. He's a rewarder. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 that without faith it's impossible to please God. And he who comes to God must know that he's, he is and he's a rewarder. God will reward you. So he reward your labor. So number one, patient endurance. Number two, res- so you do it with patience and endurance. You must have patient endurance. Number two is respect the reward. All right. If you respect the reward and know that there are better days ahead. Okay. Say, say, there are better days ahead. My darling, listen, I'm, I believe, believe God's word. There are better days ahead. Your best days are not behind you. There are better days ahead. There are better days. Don't be so discouraged. I feel like I don't feel like going on again. Look, I've messed up. I'm, hey, no, please. I know you messed up. I know you made some mistakes. But that is, this is not the time to give up. You cannot give up. You cannot give up. You cannot give up. For don't cast away your confidence. It has great re- recompense or reward. You cannot give up. Recompense of reward. You cannot give up. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to Jesus. So number three is, uh, 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 as I said in uh, earlier, look to Christ as our supreme example. Don't not to people. People will disappoint you. May disappoint you. People may disappoint you because they are human beings. Look, so just in case you feel disappointed in people, you won't be disappointed in Christ. So keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes. Don't say, all oh, this church thing, I'm tired. All oh, these people, they are hypocrites. No, no, don't, don't say that. No, don't say that. Don't say that. It might, it might, it might feel like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it might feel like that. And the facts around you may be so strong that that's how it is. But don't say that. Keep your eyes on Jesus, all right? So look up to Jesus or look unto Jesus as our extreme example. Number one, patience, endurance. Number two, respect the reward. Number three, look to Jesus as our supreme example. Number four, oh, count on God's faithfulness. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, it says that, um, um, I, I read it earlier on. Hebrews Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the confession, the profession of our faith without wavering. Why? For faithful is he who uh, that promised. Faithful is he that promised. There is a promise. There's a promise. Now, let me, let me just say, when you look, when you look back at uh, verse 36, for we have need of patience that after we have done the will of God, you, after ye have done the will of God, ye that um, ye might receive the promise. What promise are we talking about? When in Hebrews, it talks about two promises. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse um, 15, it talks about the promise of it. Uh, let me read it. Hebrews 9, 15 says that, um, and for this cause, he's, he is the mediator of the new testament that by means of death for the, re- for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called my receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So the f- f- one first promise is the promise of an eternal inheritance. And what does it take to get that promise? Watch this. It takes the work of Christ. Okay. So he says that for he, for this cause is the mediator of the nature, but by means of death. So the, his redemptive work is what brings us into the promised uh, uh, inheritance. His in in redemptive work. So this promise of eternal re- inheritance you can get it through how do you get it through the redemptive work of christ okay but this other promise i'm talking about that the bible is talking about is like hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 it says that let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering his rest any of you should seem to come short of it see this is not talking about eternal inheritance the promise of entering the rest of god the problem, look at verse, uh, verse 9. Is it verse, yeah, verse 9. Verse 9 says that there, there remains therefore a great rest for God's people. There's a rest prepared. I spoke, I think I taught on this, this subject, uh, how to enter the rest of God. I think you should listen to it again. So it says that there's a promise. That promise is entering the rest when God glorifies himself in your life, even here on earth. Okay, so that promise, how do you enter that promise? That's where you need patience. And so you don't have to cast off your uh, your confidence 
and you need patience that after you have done the will of God, you obtain the promise, verse 36 of Hebrews chapter 10. You obtain the promise. Are you getting what I'm saying? So it's, it's, that promise requires the uh, patience. And that's what I'm talking about, that Jesus Christ um, uh, counts on God's faithfulness because faithful is he who has promised and he will also do it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11, Bible says that Sarah herself, watch this, by faith, Sarah herself received strength to conceive by faith, through faith, Sarah also herself, re uh, herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful. Did you see that? Why did you get, why, how did it happen? She judged him faithful who had promised. Yeah. So you have to judge God, count on his faithfulness. If he has said it, he will do it. Faithful is he who has promised. So you have to count on God's faithfulness. Things are bad, but you know what? count on trust in God's word. Trust that God will, do his, will make good his word. God will keep his word. If others don't keep their word, trust God. If you don't even keep your word sometimes because we are human beings, trust God. He will keep his word because he's faithful. So count on God's faithfulness. The Bible says, Sarah judged God faithful. Abraham in verse 8, verse 17 and 8, verse 18, when Abraham was asked to offer, to offer, offer Isaac, the Bible says that of whom it was said that in Isaac thy seed shall be called. What Abraham was willing to sacrifice Isaac. Why? Verse 19, accounting that God was able to. So he judged that God, if God said he would do it, he's able to do it. He judged God capable. He didn't look at the condition, but look at the character of God. Right? So do not think that you won't get married. So you have to cut corners. Do not think that you won't, have, you won't get a good job or you won't have peace, so you have to cut corners. Do not think that things won't work out for you, so you have to cut corners. Just work hard and trust God. Work out. So count on God's faithfulness. Count. Sarah judged God faithful. Abraham considered, counted, accounted him. He was able to do it. For faithful is he who has promised, who also will do it. He is not preaching promise for you to do it. He promised to do it himself. All right, faithful who have promised, who also, I like the way the, the Bible inserts the word uh, um, also. For, all right, that's the one in Romans talks about, who also will do it. Praise the Lord. So uh, God will do it if he has promised. So number, um, number four is count on God's faithfulness, right? I have eight points and I'm done. Eight points. So count on God's faithfulness. Number five. Remember it. Look at verse thirty-seven. Verse thirty-seven says that Hebrews ten thirty-seven. For yet a little while, and and he uh, he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Yet a little while, and he that amplified. Let me look at the amplified. Yet a little while, and he that will come will come. Look at amplified. Sorry. The amplified says that for still a little while. A very little while, and the coming one will come and he will not delay. So don't think God has abandoned you. It won't be long. Things will change very soon. For uh, 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 our light affliction, which is bad for a moment, First, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17, is for a moment. So just a little while, all the storm will be over and Christ will show up. Trust God. My darling, trust God. About your daughter, about your husband, about your wife, about your family about your job, about the conditions around you. Pastor, about the ministry, things look so bad. People are taking advantage of this COVID. They are not coming to church or, or they are not connecting. They are not coming on the Zoom. But guess what? Look up to God. Keep your, count God faithful. Lock your confidence in the faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. Because God faithfully see who has promised, who also will do it. So remember, it won't be long. Things will change very soon. That's five. Number six. I like number six. Look at number six. Let's look at verse 38. Number six is in verse 38. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him. Heaven will not be happy with you at all if you backslide. <laughs> if you compromise, heaven will not be happy with you. Heaven, will, I'm telling you, heaven will not be happy with you, please. So don't give up. Don't backslide. Because heaven will say, ah! Look at all we have brought you through and done for you. You backslide. Heaven will not be happy with you. Oh, but Pastor, I've messed up. I've done things I shouldn't have done. It doesn't matter. It's bad. Repent and keep going. I was sharing with some people. If you fall, don't lie down. Get up and still walk. 
That's how we all started walking. We all walked by crawling and trying to, you start, try, started walking when your toddler tries to walk, he falls and then get up. Why do you fall and say, okay, I won't walk again? No, don't do that. Pastor, I've tried, I've tried everything. I'm still messing up. Rise up and still keep going. But pastor, people are saying all kinds of things about you. Did they die to save you? Did they die to save you? Is it not Christ who died to save you? Look unto Jesus and keep running. Keep running. Get up and keep dust yourself of the, de- the debt. And keep running. Keep running. Keep running. Perseverance. He says that for you have need of perseverance. That's patience. Perseverance. Keep going. Keep going. Finish hard like marathon. Finish hard. Finish hard. Press on. Persevere. Things will change. Quite too be long. Things will change. And if you backslide, if you give up, God said, my soul will not have pleasure in him. God will not be happy with you at all. So remember, if God is not happy with you, then it's not good news. <laughs> and then, um, so have number, number six is that heaven will not be pleased with you if you give up. Number seven, um, Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every... No, there's so much cloud of witnesses around you. The, 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 witness, the evidence, evidence that God is faithful, God is good, is mounting, all, mounting up all around you. Can't you see? God is faithful. Look at the things he has done in the past, what he has brought you through. through. How you could, you could have even lost your job a while ago. But look, you prayed and God has seen you through. And listen to look at the other people's testimony. Look, you are surrounded with mountain evidence that God is faithful. And people are watching. People, people's joy is, is connected to your perseverance and you making it to the end. Bible says that the arena, I taught a message that an arena is packed. You are in the center. Demons are watching the way you behave. Angels are watching the way you behave. The saints who have died are watching the way we behave. We are all also watching the way we behave because we need you to keep going. We don't want you to give up. So the arena is packed. You are our witness that people can persevere without giving up on God. You are our evidence. So please, the arena is packed. You, have, you are surrounded with so many cloud of witnesses. Witnesses of the fact that God is faithful. And witnesses who are also watching the way you are, your, your story. How you also, your story will play out. We are also, also watching because it's, we have a great stake in your life. My brother, we have other Christians, your pastor. And other Christians, we have a great stake in your, your life. You have to do well, okay? Do well. Don't cast away. So you must know that you have this cloud of witness around you. So you can't afford to give up. And then that, that last point. Thank you, Jesus. So now, number one, patience, endurance. Number two, respect the reward. And how do you keep your confidence to the end? Or how not to cast away your confidence? All right. Number one, patience, endurance. Number two, respect the reward. Number three, look to Christ for, uh, uh, as our supreme example. Number four, number four, count on God's faithfulness. Number five, remember it won't be long. Number six, ha- heaven will not be pleased with you if you give up. Number seven, the uh, cloud of witnesses. There are mountain evidence all around you. So cloud when I say mount, mount, no mountain, like the, the witnesses are evidence is, is mounting up, is mounting, is increasing, right? So, <laughs> um, uh, cloud of witnesses, number, and then number eight, number eight, you are, let, let me read it, the last verse in Hebrews chapter 10. But we are not of them that draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. You are not one of those people who backslide. No, 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 no. You are not a backslider. So why are you, why are you accommodating backsliding thoughts? <laughs> Listen, terrible things have happened, but you can't still give up. Because guess what? You are part of the winning team. You are part of the winning team. So you can't give up. In fact, there are times, any, anyone who has worked with God to the end and had testimonies and witness of success progress will always tell you that sometimes it gets to a place you feel it's like giving up don't use your feeling to judge your actions no no your feelings can be so bad that's why we walk by faith no we don't walk by encouragement we walk by faith we walk by faith faith is standing on god's word and keep going so we walk by faith and not by sight 
not uh, if you are waiting for somebody to encourage you for things it's okay it's good encouragement can come but in the absence of encouragement and when discouragement grabs you let your faith keep you going even when discouragement grabs you sir even if discouragement grabs you let your faith keep you going because you are not a backslider you can't compromise you can't give up You've come too far to give up. We have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord. Trusting his holy word, he's never failed us. No, we can't turn back. We've come this far by faith. You've come very far and keep going, keep going because you are not one of them that backslide. You are not one of those people. No, you are not. And you won't backslide. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray this has been a, a blessing to somebody just to let somebody know that there's great recompense of reward if you do not cast away your confidence. Don't cast away your confidence. Don't cast away your parousia. Don't cast it away because there's great recompense of reward. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank God for using his servant, Reverend Dr. David Entry, to share this awesome word. If this message has blessed you in any way, please spread the word by sharing it and send us an email to amen at charis.org. Remember to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and Twitter for regular updates on what God is doing here at Caris Ministries. Stay blessed.